podcast that is about things uh i am joined i am chris jazz sequence with a three on the internet i am joined as wait always. time out time out yeah i hate the derail introductions uh-huh you're joined with what you, you love derailing introductions true i am joined that sentence never finished so what i was going to do i was okay next question joined uh-huh. by us Yes. Jazz sequence with a three. Uh huh. Where's the three? The three of us. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I'm going to get my coffee. Keep hearing that. I can hear you. <laughs> he, he anticipated this podcast years ago. <laughs> the three is in place of one of the E's, but I'm not going to tell you which one, Gary. It's silent. <laughs> It is silent. I mean, unless you wanted to pronounce it jazz frequents, which I sometimes do. I sometimes uh, pronounce it jazz frequents to distinguish ja- that jazz sequence from the jazz sequence without a three, because I have both. Anyway, I am jazz sequence three on the internet. Um, I'm joined as always by binary Gary on the internet, Gary in real life, who's currently uh, destroying his kitchen. And... Also by Allison Tarr, Allison Plus on the internet, who uh, is a professional uh, flamenco dancer. And, and not destroying my kitchen. And right? not destroying the kitchen whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, was it, were you destroying the ki- was I destroying the kitchen on the internet? I missed that part. Well, right, you'll, you'll, you'll have to listen know. to the podcast now. <laughs> yeah, you'll never know. Sorry about your luck. This is crazy. Every time I get on call, my dog's like, oh. I should go outside, hanging out by the door. Do you need to leave screen again, Gary? <laughs> or, no, I, I know. I'm going to wait until like a really crucial moment of the podcast, and then I'll leave screen. <laughs> I kind of like the fact that you're in and out, though, because then maybe you will actually listen. Just to but I can up. hear you because I'm bringing you with me. No, no you can't. And you, I'm pretty sure my, there's a microphone in there, so you can hear me. Nope. No? I can't hear you at really? all. Really? No. Nope. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm just anticipating your questions. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. No. This not- it doesn't not help with the existentialism problems I have sometimes. Like this is sort of like when you go for paper towels and the machine doesn't recognize you. <laughs> I like to think of myself as everyone's snuffle up against pokeru type thing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I may or may not exist in their real life. <laughs> um that's true because if you don't if you don't watch the video then then you might just be a disembodied voice yeah. did did you mention any of our um tertiary assets your tertiary asset was destroying the kitchen i, I meant like um <laughs> genre and such things i have not mentioned genre should i should we mention genre sure, sure i feel like at this point we sort of have to uh, we have a bot. It's called Genrenator. It's generated more than uh, half a million uh, genres. It has got uh, 15 Slack teams have installed it. What it does, uh, it generates genres. It's also online on Twitter. Oh, G- Gary was just doing that so that he could leave the camera again. I know. It's so manipulative. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I think you should do this pitch. <laughs> Or is that a security mechanism? It's not oiled, so you can tell. When it's, <laughs> it's just humid in Florida, so hinges squeak. I don't know. That's quite a hinge. <laughs> I wonder, too, if it, if it hits the natural frequency of the microphone, because it's not, or maybe it's like, maybe I'm like one of those people that has a beeping fire alarm and I've gotten used to it, it doesn't bother me. Maybe. I don't know. One of those. It's a very loud hinge. Yeah. 
you know, there are people who just, their, their fire alarm is just beeping and they just leave it. They don't change yeah. it. So there was this, I used to, years ago, um, there was this, uh, it might still be on the air, there's a radio show called Loveline, um, Love which is Love. crazy. And at some point, Adam Carolla was on um, yeah, I remember as a host. That. Yeah, and so he used to pick on people. Yeah, at, at that's how I knew about it too, actually. So, um, and Dr. Drew. Um, but mm -hmm. people would call in, and Adam would always pick on people who had like a fire alarm beeping in the background. Um, <laughs> the premise that, like, how lazy are you that you just, like, oh, F it, right? Like, that doesn't annoy you. Like, you just figured, like, I'll get used to it. So, that was what I was referring to. And also that it's just I, I, the question that they're calling in about is clearly about clearly more of a priority than changing that battery. Or oh, and the questions are, were insane. I sometimes. Remember. Sometimes they were very important, but sometimes they were just insane. Usually they were insane. Well, sometimes it was just, I think it was more just showing of what people are and are willing to not actually ask like real people in their lives that they have to call on a radio show because mm -hmm. like they're not asking their doctors or <laughs> they're like <laughs> other That's true professionals they're not if willing I put this to gerbil up my ass will it yeah damage me permanently dr drew yeah. really handled a lot of those questions with patients that as a non-doctor i do not know <laughs> here you that, that door seriously is like a go horror me. movie, <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> What if the, the door noise happened, but then someone other than Gary came down? <laughs> that would be excellent. <laughs> we are now joined by Bob. <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? Bob has no last name, and he only exists in a temporal reality. Or it would be so, like a guest host, like Rhonda would come in. And he'd be like, what? Surprise! <laughs> But also, we wouldn't we wouldn't actually know if it was legitimate. Yeah, is it is it really a guest host or is it Gary in a Rhonda costume? <laughs> it squeaks when I put it on. <laughs> we think it's the door. It's not at all. No, it's just the costume. It's just the costume. Well, so uh, if you're new to the program, which you shouldn't be, because we've been this is uh, <laughs> if you're new to the five, program, you're not still five, listening. Five thousand. <laughs> Um, Wait, ep what episode is this? I don't know. Uh, 27. 11, 11, 0, 11. One. Yeah, one that's not, that, that wouldn't make it 27. That would make it 26 again. Oh, no, wait. Last time I have my math. Yeah. Oh. I, think. I don't know. 11011. 11,011. Yeah. That's what episode it is. Uh, anyway, oh, if, you're, if you're new to the program, which shouldn't be, but if you are, uh, the way that this works so is welcoming. <laughs> You've just joined us. Thanks for being here. We're glad to have you. I'm just saying, probably no one's new at this particular episode. Probably someone will be. One person will be. And statistically, go. they're going to find some other episode now because we have so many other episodes that aren't this one. So that's but statistically, isn't it likely if someone is going to start listening, they're going to start with the most recently broadcast oh. episode? Oh, okay, possibly. So what we need to do is a lot of promotion before this one drops. <laughs> and statistically, people will be like, promotion. statistically, Chris is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's, not the that's not statistics, that's reality. Um, uh, anyway, uh, if you're new to the program, <laughs> uh, the way this works is uh, Allison comes up with a topic that neither Gary nor I know in advance and then we attempt to talk about this the topic without knowing what the thing is and hijinks ensue and at the end uh, we answer listener questions that you the listener can submit by going to binaryjazz.us or at binaryjazzing us on that uh, social network that everybody is uh, leaving Facebook Twitter oh have you all set up on Mastodon yet? I set Are up an account to? on Mastodon like a year ago, and I was like, nobody's oh. here. This is boring. Um, I might go back to Mastodon just because everybody jumped ship to go to Mastodon, but I have not looked at it in yeah. a year. Yeah, I'm, I'm not until there's not enough critical mass on Twitter to keep me because I'm lazy. 
I mean, everything that I follow on Twitter is still basically on Twitter, and I don't, I don't need yeah. another social network. Yeah, Twitter seems like enough social network for me. Too much. I mean, actually. not that Overload. Twitter is not that Twitter is great, but also Mastodon lacks all of our bots, and you know that would be a tough sell for uh, me to not yeah. <laughs> to not have our bots, the ones that we built um, on on Mastodon. I was in the really I just got lost in the rabbit hole of different instances of Mastodon. I don't just. I just didn't have the time. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not a straightforward process, huh? Transferring bots or dual posting? Um, it probably is more so than I was making it, but I just veered down different paths that I shouldn't have even started investigating. Mm. And then I, yeah, so. And that I get was, that. was on me. <laughs> yeah, that's Tuesdays. <laughs> oh. Um, so the topic this week is, you. I think you'll know, but I don't know how much you know about it. So the topic this week is the Bermuda Triangle. You know what that oh, is. Oh. That's a thing. Yeah. Yes. What do you know about the Bermuda Triangle? We all <sighs> kind of know what it is. Vaguely. Where is yeah. the Bermuda Triangle? I, I don't, yeah, that's the thing. I don't even know where the Bermuda is. So the Bermuda Somewhere Triangle Bermuda. goes from Miami. I'm going to guess. Miami, Bahamas, Bermuda, I think, are the three points. Um, and it is indeed a triangle. And it is an area where there's a lot of weird like weather phenomena. Like triangle? Uh, What's an triangle? What's an isosceles triangle? Well, the perfect triangle with equal sides. Yeah. I don't believe, isn't it? No, I don't believe it is. I thought it was the No, I believe an isosceles is, but I don't believe that a Bermuda triangle oh. is an isosceles triangle. Oh. <laughs> I believe you that an isosceles is a triangle. <laughs> well, good, because I wasn't entirely sure. But if you believe me, Gary, that means I was probably right. Uh, we better Google it, because now I don't want to <laughs> trust you. This is the podcast where if Gary believes something, it is not true. It's true. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been established as true. Trend. Two sides of equal length sometimes is specified as, as having exactly two sides of equal length. Because otherwise it would be an equilateral triangle. Right? Okay. Yeah, right. That's right. So equilateral triangle is a subset of isosceles triangle. Summer right. school geometry finally paying off. <laughs> um... So the Bermuda Triangle, did I get the three locations right? Let me start with that. Can I ask I'm that? I'm not going to tell you whether you're right or not. Okay. That's not the point of this podcast at all. People don't <laughs> walk away with actual information. Well, actually, that's that, not true. We do walk away with actual information. It just takes us 40 minutes of hand wringing to get there. Yeah, two people walk away with actual information eventually. <laughs> lots of people walk away with lots of misinformation. It's, yes. it's, yeah, it's, Especially it's, if they leave early. It's loosely, I think... Um, <laughs> Miami, Puerto Rico, Bermuda. Uh, so yeah, I was so I was trying to think like where things were located, and Bahamas did not seem like the right, right spot. But, but vaguely, yeah. Yeah. Tri correct triangle. Um, so it is also at a point where the Gulf Stream turns past the southern tip of Florida and starts making its way northward. Um, so there's a lot of um, current in the water. The um, uh, uh, the triangle is known for like lots of wrecks of boats and airplanes. But um, why would airplanes also crash in the Bermuda? Now, see, that is interesting. Um, if it's current. <laughs> I did watch a TV show one time on the Bermuda Triangle, probably on, probably on the History Channel when they were I not covering history. I was just going to say you watched on yeah. the History Channel. I'm, I'm sure I did, yeah. Psychically. Yes. Um, and one of the ideas, theories, was um, that that area is unsettled under the water and there's some methane. And so it's possible that if you're flying through a cloud of emitted methane that your sensors would be confused and cause um, issues with fuel supply uh, in older planes. I mean, I don't think that any, like when's the last time you heard of like a passenger plane going down the Bermuda Triangle? I don't know that I've heard of an actual plane <laughs> crashing passing through the Bermuda Triangle. I've just heard myths of planes crashing when they pass through the Bermuda Triangle or still missing. And I don't I think know like I've ever the, read any factual account of anything being, yeah. Well, like what about a quintessential Sarah? example? Did she go down? Did she disappear in the Bermuda Triangle? Who? Oh. Well, she disappeared, whether or not <clears throat> it, the triangle, yeah. it actually occurred there. Because then there was yeah. that photo that showed up of like 
people in Puerto Rico and there's like a silhouette and everyone's just like, that's a woman wearing pants of that time and it must be Amelia Earhart, so she must have survived. But Or maybe no the photographer was a time traveler. Also true. That's, um, the Smithsonian is known for their time travel. <laughs> of course they are. I do think um, that uh, it, it happened with greater regularity, Chris, like in older planes. Um, and I wonder if, if the phenomenon of the Bermuda, Bermuda or Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle is that um, it's- that's, that's the Bermuda Triangle's cousin. Yes, <laughs> heading, heading eastward from, from Bermuda. Um, the, it, it like had, like someone like pointed out like, boy, it's really, we lose a lot of planes out there when in reality it was like, our maps were bad and so it was somewhere east of a else. big airport in Miami, things are falling out of the sky, but really it was no more than anywhere else, just that it's hard to crash land on a, uh, in a field when you're over the ocean. Not a lot of fields out there. No fields. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, there's a category of like paranormal triangles, like that's a thing. I, I believe that. That makes sense to me. Not just the Bermuda Triangle. There's other ones out there in the world. I didn't know that. So. Just... Well, there are some numbers that are that are clearly um, more prone to being associated with paranormal things, and I, three is one of them. I. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't it manifest itself in a triangle? Um, you know, I think the other thing I'm trying to think about what else another Bermuda Triangle and just that area in general, weather out there. Um, Florida, like, afternoon thunderstorms. Um, I mean, I'm like three miles. That's, what I, that's what I was thinking is, is that, I mean, being a skeptic or being skeptical of most things at first glance, anyway, I'm not always a skeptic, but being fairly skeptical, weather is the most obvious uh, answer to things being weird or ships and airplanes having difficulty in that particular area like weather and some sort of a you know geographic anomaly that is unique to that place um because obviously i mean yeah so and there's a lot of lightning around here i would assume that plays a part you know mm -hmm. if your airplane or boat gets struck by lightning that's not a great thing especially if, and if there's lightning coming to the ocean it's probably like one of those things where you know lightning hits the tallest object if you're in a boat it's very likely you are the tallest object around. Everything else. How do you explain that, like, like wreckage and not and stuff not being found? Is that just like the ocean? I think it. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's just a current. Like yeah. things fall and they get covered or swept further away than you think. I yeah. I mean, that's the ocean's easily, really that's big. Easier to it's not as big as space. That's easier to explain if there are weird current things happening. Because I, of, I like, believe there's weird. Problems. I do like the idea of like the ocean, not as big as space. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure we keep our facts straight. You know, true. No, it's true. I don't want people to walk away misinformed. Like, did you know the ocean is huge? <laughs> yeah, space is, I, I wonder which is bigger, though. <laughs> I wish I would have clarified that on the podcast. <laughs> well, I mean, the ocean does fall into space when you go uh, out to the edge of the world, the cliff at the end of the world. Um, the ocean uh -huh. falls into space, so I mean uh -huh. there is a fair bit of ocean in space, and basically space is just big ocean. Oh, of course. For our flat earther friends who are listening, friends of the podcast, flat earthers. Do, do you think we have any flat earthers? At the flat team? earthers. <laughs> <laughs> if you are a flat earther, please send us questions. <laughs> Identify yourselves. I will be. I would. I would love to chat more. I. I. I honestly think that. 50% of flat earthers are trolls. Yeah, totally. Who are, who are yeah. pretending that number seems low flat to me. earthers yeah. just to see, just to egg the actual flat earthers on. That number especially, seems low to me. Especially, yeah, well, 50 okay. seems low. <laughs> I mean, especially having, having had um, some people like uh, uh, copy paste like questions and, and discussions from, from flat earth reddits and stuff um, into, into Slack. It's, it's definitely, there's a lot of egging each other on. Yeah. like poking of certain mm -hmm. truths assumptions yeah also can we clarify what you visually what you were waving around before was that a leaf 
Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I play with things that are near me when we're on this podcast. This is a coaster that is shaped like a leaf, yes. Okay. Yeah. It's currently not in use because I'm not wearing my drink. So <laughs> this coaster, oh, let's see if I can do it. This coaster suction cups to the bottom of my glass. So this is in use. Don't <laughs> fall. I also yes, play success. Uh, while so. I'm on the call. And I'm this is iced coffee. Yeah. Lately, <laughs> late, yes. I noticed that was iced coffee because it was not in the coffee mug. Uh, lately, I've been playing with my fidget spinner. I'm not coordinated enough for those spinners. I need just it's not a really. regular object that doesn't spin. <laughs> it's not really about coordination. Well, um, you can you can borrow my my fidget cube. Oh, so yeah, that's oh, I need more great. more of a solid entity. The thing that bothers me about the fidget cube is I've got so there's the side. This is the side that I like the most because it's got buttons, right? Um, because everything else makes a lot of noise, but the buttons for the most part don't make noise. But this button has a distinct click, and this button right here has a no click, and this button has a click, this button over here has a click, this button, no click. So there's do, two buttons. Do they feel the same? No. And that bothers me. The tactile sensation yeah. of, the, of that click, like that's the rewarding part, but I don't, I've got this row right here that clicks, and these two over here that don't, and it, it's, it's a problem. It's a flaw in the fidget cube. Hmm. Would you fly through the Bermuda Triangle? Not, uh, not intentionally. Oh, like, see, I wouldn't not, even hesitate. Not knowingly. I, mean, yeah. I, I have no problem if I don't know that I'm flying through the Bermuda Triangle. If like that's the flight path and I'm going to, I don't know, somewhere, and the flight path happened to take me through the Bermuda Triangle, I, I know nothing about it, then that's probably fine. But I would not knowingly say, oh, there's a flight plan that goes through the Bermuda Triangle. I'm definitely going to do that trip. So no flights um, or cruises on vacation. Yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, I totally would. I figure if the pilot's ready to fly, I'm ready to ride. The pilot has as much vested as I do. Right? What if so. you? What if you were like certified as a pilot? Would that be a choice you'd make? Yeah, absolutely. I fly. <laughs> yeah, I have total confidence in my hypothetical flight. Hypothetical <laughs> flying. Well, yeah, I know. It's like if, if you knew how to fly, would you feel comfortable? No. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. Not. Absolutely, hundred yeah, percent. I wouldn't I can't hesitate. Even imagine, I can't imagine the world where I'm, I'm comfortable as a pilot. So I can't even. I can't leapfrog to the next decision. <laughs> I, I still have that. I, I love. I feel like a kid every time I fly. Like whenever the plane leaves the ground, like I, there's that moment of physics. Like holy shit, it still works every time. That <laughs> that feeling is just so so fucking cool. Like so you're, you're I wish I could bottle that. That like you want to see the landing gear come down. You want to see the whole. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I used, yeah, so I would definitely be a window seat person, um, except when I was like traveling for business and had tight connections and I'd do the aisle thing, but yeah, if I, if I, yeah, if I don't have to rush on it, uh, window seat me all the way, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, I, I spent the first uh, several uh, flights in my life being completely paranoid that the entire airplane is just going to explode spontaneously, um, right. and that it's definitely going to crash. So, uh, and then I had to like talk myself down for years, like statistically air, this airplane is not going to crash. Statistically, this one right now is not going to crash. It's not going to crash because airplanes don't actually crash that often. It's safer than cars. It's yeah. not going to crash. Um, and so now as an adult, uh, I don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, but I don't have that like, oh my God, it's amazing. And we're flying. It's like, it's still sort of like, Oh, I hope this gets off the ground. I mean, the way, the way the wings are shaped and you're traveling through the air, which is actually a fluid and it's like lift. Oh man. I, I, I know I've been, I've been to the so science cool. museums where it's got like the, the, the wind tunnel and you've got the, the wing shape thing. You put it in the, yeah. literally like wants to take your arm off because it's like so yes. aerodynamic. Oh. Yeah, I've done that. I get, I get the physics. The physics is definitely solid. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exciting. I agree, with, I agree with the physics. <laughs> You're like, I just don't need to be a participant in it. <laughs> yeah. So we've established today that the ocean is not quite as big as space. <laughs> physics are solid. Yeah. <laughs> the we, right are, we are behind physics. The physics of airplanes is... They were on some on something. Yeah, we agree with the physics of airplanes, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> It'd be pretty bad if we didn't agree with the physics of airplanes. That is not right. It's just, you know what I think <laughs> those work. airplanes are doing the wrong thing. That should be going down, not up. I don't that, think airplanes work, everybody. <laughs> is that, that's, that's the Bernoulli principle, right? Is that what that, that is? The what? Look. Is that, is that yes. the Bernoulli principle? Absolutely. Okay. Are you sure? No. Well, I mean, I'm this, is bi- this is binary jazz. I'm just like, go, you said something with authority, with authority, and I'm going to say yes. Absolutely, that's the thing. For newly principle, it is. Might be your turn to bring a topic to the table. Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> uh, the Bermuda principle like, is the principle that things that are light float and things that are not sink. That is the no, it has to do do with the speed of moving fluid. And the pressure, um, but I started to type Bernoulli and an so autocompleted triangle. A glass so, if you see if I know what this triangle is, at someone, then the Bernoulli principle oh. says that the person on the other end is going to get wet. Check this out: <laughs> the Bernoulli's triangle. This is exciting. Is an array of partial sums of the binomial coefficients. What Great. the hell is that? We have different <laughs> definitions of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, 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 I know what each individual word in that sentence means, but I can't parse them together. I was gonna say I was just like I, I know those words separately, but in that order, I don't know what you're. Saying. Yeah, I don't either. I. That's why I'm excited about it. Like this will be a thing I learned today. So bookmark on that for this afternoon. Another triangle to learn. I'm assuming it's the same Bernoulli, right? Let's see. This, this episode yes. of Binary Jazz, where Gary Absolutely. reads Wikipedia. It is the same Bernoulli. It's got to be. He had lots of spare time, this guy. I mean, that's all he was, is spare time. I mean, that's literally, like, he had no job. He just had ideas and wrote them down. Unemployed. Unemployed. He just had triangles and principles, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. If you don't stand for your principles, what do you stand for? Triangles, obviously. <laughs> it's like office. standing on a Lego piece. Ouch. <laughs> Um, and so, well, so, so let's talk about like practical day application of the um, Bermuda Triangle, right? Like airplanes fly through there, cruise ships go through there. Do they? Maybe not. Maybe maybe it doesn't. Maybe it really doesn't exist. Maybe on a map they filled it in. Like well, this is what it would look like if it exists. But actually, there's nothing there. I mean, it's like the 13th floor in buildings. Oh, yeah. Some some buildings have a 13th floor, but many buildings do not have a 13th floor. That to me is the the most asinine thing. Is it? Is it not? Does it? Does that not bother you? It doesn't. Does it bother me that there's a, a floor full of death and destruction and mayhem? That bothers me. I mean, I think it's funny. A haunted floor where everybody dies. That bothers me. <laughs> You're like, I would be far happier without the the floor where everybody is going to have like bloody mirrors and like ghosts in their, in their <laughs> behind them and like little girls in hallways. <laughs> What, where's Comcast going to have their offices then? These are very on the 13th intense. floor. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, yeah, all, all the 13th floors, you can, Comcast, you can take all the 13th floors ever. Cheaper rent. But, but here's my problem, right? So somebody is starting the 14th floor, which is the 13th floor. No, it's not. It is. Like, we didn't skip it. But there's not an empty floor that the elevator is passing by. It's there just labeled 14. 13th floor. It just due to the trans uh, trans dynamic physics, they've shrunk the 13th floor into nothing, and they've just put the 14th floor on top. So it's actually there, and but you can only you can only reach it if you uh, use a shrink ray. Uh, and the entrance is right in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> well, Every entrance to the 13th floor. You, you have to do a special it. combination on the on the um, on the uh, on the elevator. The, the number pad, yeah. Number pad, eight, yeah. Six, seven, seven, five, three, oh, right. Nine. Yes, exactly. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. And then the 13th button magically appears at the bottom. And then you push the button, then you press 13, then you go to the 13th floor. Huh. Gosh, I've never gone out of my way to go to the 13th floor. It sounds like quite the ordeal. You kind of need to yeah. go out of your way. I, I would, yeah, that's another one where I, would, I mean, 13th floor, I would gladly work in the 13th floor. It's just another floor of the building, you know? It's it's silly to me that so they don't exist. You'd be the bellhop that's like giving people the side eye when they're like refusing to stay on a certain floor. See, I uh, I'd be I the most judgmental bellhop ever, wouldn't I? I mentioned my skepticism about, about like why the Bermuda Triangle is a thing, but I still won't fly through it willingly, and I still believe that there's a thirteenth floor that's going to kill you. So <laughs> <laughs> obviously, my skepticism is mixed with a great deal of uh, superstition. Paranoia, got it. 
Well, it's like if you have yeah, the different. choice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if I have the choice, like if you're like, hey, it's Thursday afternoon. Do you want to fly through Bermuda Triangle just to see? Like, hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Right? I'm on. Because I'm so convinced that it'll just be another flight, which is I'm cool. I'm sure all the people aboard discussed. these other flights thought that it would just be another flight. <laughs> exactly. But we've established, like, what we haven't heard a lot about those flights going missing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they went missing. <laughs> But remember, remember um, when that Malaysian Airways flight went missing, like it was sort of big news. Yeah. But that's, that wasn't in the Bermuda Triangle, was it? No, oh, okay. no. But I feel like if a plane took off from Miami and went missing, it would be pretty big news. That's true. I'm Probably. Gonna, now I'm going to look up and see what the most recent one was that went missing. So was there anything we didn't cover in the Bermuda Triangle that you need to educate us on? Yeah, I was going to say, what happens at the end of an episode where the topic is actually known by us? People can go do their own. I, I think the problem is, is I, I can't solve the Bermuda Triangle for people because yeah. it's all... Oh, you were hoping we could solve it for you. That's where this was going. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. But I think you hit on all the important stuff, like Gulf Stream, human error, weather. You mentioned methane. That was... I didn't, I didn't know about that. Uh, you should probably Google yeah, that. that I might have made. I. I <laughs> that was scary. I might have. I might have. I might have conflated that with something else in my head. But I think no, you no, should Google a, it. I no, think that's, it was a, that's a legitimate thing. That's. that's not okay. Just, <laughs> thank um, you, History Channel, for all the <laughs> history. Man, that channel has really jumped the shark. Let's see, the most recent plane that disappeared was in 2007. There you go. It's still oh, a thing. 2017. So we're whoa. How many? How many uh, passengers? Still a thing. Um, it was a private aircraft. Yeah. It doesn't say. Those go down an awful lot more than we realize, those little ones. And it's because nobody cares. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, there's only like three people on them or something. Yeah. And most and often, the most recent there's also pilot error because they're... 2015. What kind of boat? Um, a big one. Let's see. Well, pretty, pretty large. It, it doesn't say how many people, but... The photo looks like a large boat. <laughs> oh, so they found the wreckage? Um, for that one, they did. And then in, earlier in 2015, there was a 19-foot boat with two boys on it, and it just disappeared, and they never saw it again. But so here's dun, dun, the deal. Dun. Like, it's a huge area of, of water. So two boys head out on it, right? And yeah. they run out of fuel or something. Like, who the hell knows where they could have gotten off to? Right? That's I mean, you're true. out there at the mercy of the ocean. That's true. But it's then, like, an unforgiving okay, place. In 1963, 40 people on a cruise ship just disappeared. Yeah, I mean, but people disappearing in the ocean is not hard to believe. The ocean covers 75% of the earth. It's far larger than, and it's also almost impossible to, it's, it's like pinpointing something in space, except easier. Uh, because there was this, as we established, space is bigger than the water. So, yeah. but it's still a really big place that has essentially not, no landmark. It's all the same thing. And so pinpointing one object in the water is, is like needle in the haystack. There was this cool, oh, I didn't remember where it was from. I believe, it, I believe there was this website years ago that I hit, and I think it was in French. I'm not sure what language. Um, but the idea was like um, what it's like to fall out of a boat like in the ocean and you had to like just tread water right so it was it was really captivating like you're on this boat and it was a sailboat and the boat turned and the mast knocked you off and your buddy came and yelled off the back of the boat at you and you're supposed to hit like i don't know j and k or something so like slowly tread water and like how quickly like the boat was like past wave peaks you couldn't see it anymore i mean you could see it turning around but once it was like past the peaks you lost total visibility on it and then how long you could tread water and it was like had this tiny timer in the corner that got bigger and bigger and bigger. It was like three minutes. You were like, like engrossed in, in a total panic, just the sound of the waves and like nothing. And it was in my web browser. It was stupid, but oh, it was so effective. Even um, in the description, I'm getting anxious just thinking about how long. Having, I was, having just been overturned on a kayak <laughs> recently, I'm having just dread and fear and, and yeah, anxiety thinking about this. Oh, wow. This is why I would never go in the guess, ocean in a kayak, <laughs> no matter how stable. Oh, I'm so the, my scariest, when I was a Boy Scout, we did a lot of um, sea kayaking. And um, Sounds year for camp, 
it, it does sound fun. One year for camp, I was late to um, camp. So I rode with one of, um, actually, my dad, we did a tandem kayak, my dad and I, and I think it was just, a, just the two of us. I don't think we had another kayak we were with. And we were going to head out to the island the rest of the scouts were camping on. Um, and we had to cross this bay at night. And we, as we headed out, head, as we went out in the kayak, it was like we couldn't track where we were. The, the compass didn't seem to jive with what we were seeing as far as like profiles of land. So after like an hour of paddling, we turned, turned back um, because we were convinced like we might miss this and end up, it was the Gulf of Mexico. So it wouldn't have been awful as far as waves, but still, I mean, it would have been horrendous night if we missed our uh, island and gone out. So we came back to shore because it was easy to find shore. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. That seems like that story could have turned out much differently. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. 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 That's a wise I, um. That's a good. I also, <laughs> I also almost ran out of fuel in Tampa Bay um, in a little Zodiac boat with a buddy of mine. Um, we heading out, like we looked, we thought we had enough reserve fuel coming back. And um, when we came back, we, uh, uh, we were going against the current and hitting some really major waves. So we went a lot slower. So we made it like under the bridge and almost back to where we thought we were going to be fine. And the engine started sputtering. So we were able to pull into a dock, but uh, that would have been a bad one too. Just a drift. No, I don't like the sound of this. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to stay on dry land for the next eight to 10 weeks at least. <laughs> Going up to I'm ahead. this week and getting back on the kayak because I can't learn my lesson. <laughs> that sounds awesome. In a lake. That's safe. Yeah. Well, I was a lake before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least like you can you'll you can hit shore eventually. Eventually. Depending on the size of the lake. Yeah. Different kayaks. So do we have any reader questions this week? Uh we reader have some questions? Allison questions. No. We have Allison Listener questions. questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not reader questions, listener questions, but we don't have those either. So we're going to do uh, one of the Allison questions we have. Andy Warhol supposedly said, an artist is somebody who produces things that people don't need to have. Agree or disagree? I'm going to put my uh, vote in to agree because Andy Warhol is not a very smart man, but definitely a very uh, skilled man at some things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you don't need to have anything that an artist creates, but obviously he was an artist in creating things anyway, because that they don't typically, I don't think artists make art for people. They make them, I mean, some people do, some artists do. And those artists are assholes. But the rest of well, the, um, <laughs> the rest of artists make things for themselves primarily, and then sometimes they sell them. And sometimes people buy them. I disagree from the sense that I think the human condition requires um, interpreting others through art. So not the necessarily I, actual objects. Correct. Like, I don't think anybody needs the art, but they need the art to exist. Yes. So yes. we need I art, not the actual art. The, the concept. It, of it, art. It, but the byproduct of needing the art means that we need the art object to exist. Yes. But you as an individual do not yeah. need a painting or a sculpture or something. You might get one because you think it's cool, but you don't need it. It's not a no. Need. No, but I would argue that I need that connection with another human separated by miles and years, right? Like that, I need that emotional connection somehow, which necessitates the need for that object to exist. I don't need it. I don't need it to be on my wall. I don't, but I need it to exist. So the creation part is what you need to exist rather than. I need to exist to, to bridge that gap so that relationship can, or that, that, that moment can happen. And I need that moment to happen, right? Like I can't imagine a world without art in, in any form. I, I just can't imagine. Yeah, I can't. It's impossible. So uh, fund the arts, ladies and gentlemen. Donate oh, totally. to your local art thing. Yeah. Visit art museums. Yeah. Give them lots of money. Yeah. Especially marginalized artists. Yes. And any city programs for that, that are good for arts and things? 
I love um, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Jacksonville. The building is dramatic and most often the art is, and some of it I even understand. <laughs> I rarely understand art. <laughs> oh, there's, I need to find a vi- link to the video. That's a show note link. Um, there was an installation where the art. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.